So what does let's save more lives really mean and how can it explode your practice so that you can make more of an impact? Hey everyone, Dr. Clint Steele here. Welcome back to the Brain-Based Practice Podcast. The Actually, I should say the let's save more lives brain-based practice podcast. Because here's the deal. Um, you know, I, I was talking to a doc yesterday and basically what we do when we focus on the brain and nervous system is we actually save more lives. And so the doc I was talking to yesterday, I want to share this. And I told him, I said, I'm going to, this is going to be my next podcast. Great conversation that we had with him. Um, basically came out and said, you know, I, I don't feel like I'm as passionate as I should be about, about this, you know, term, let's save more lives. And so I said, okay, let's have a discussion about it. And so that's, that's what I want to do with you, by the way. Thank you so much. If you're new to the uh, to the platform, you're watching on YouTube. Welcome. If you're listening on Spotify, welcome. Listening on your your uh, your your podcast platform, welcome. Okay, super pumped to have you here. I would love for you to, if you enjoy this, you're enjoying the the pod, If you, if, by the way, if this is your first one, this is episode th- uh, this is episode six, I believe. Uh, and so we've got several episodes before this. Go back and listen to this. Some of the things that I refer to in these episodes can be found in in the, the foundations, which is episode one. But uh, I would love if you guys enjoy this and, and you're enjoying this one, please share this. Please share this with other practitioners because here's here's my mission is to go out and help more people improve their lives, save their own lives by making them aware of the fact that when their brain isn't functioning properly, it leads to over 90%, depending on who you talk to, 100% of disease. But maybe even more importantly, and this is a discussion the doc and I had yesterday, was that uh, we're talking not only quantity of life, but maybe more importantly, actually probably more importantly, quality of life, right? And so I'm going to get into the basics of this. But again, if you like this, please comment, please share, please subscribe, please hit the like button, please make comments. If you if you would like to hear me talk about anything that you are concerned about, you have questions that you'd like to hear an episode about, please send it to me, okay? You can follow us, by the way, as well. If you if you go to Brain-Based Health Solutions, brainbasedhs.com, that's our website. Uh, we've got tons of free uh, material there. You can you can check it out. And if you want uh, you know more information, you want to do some more in-depth work with me, happy to do that with you. Uh, just reach out and uh, and we can jump on a call. So what does actually let's save more lives mean? So I'm going to break this down to a foundational level. Uh, and this is super important because I don't think that enough of us break this down to a uh, a foundational level. And I, I really like doing this because it helps simplify it for me and helps simplify it, I think, for the public as well. Is if you, you know, as I was talking to this dog yesterday, I said, you know, we were in human cadaver lab, right? At some at some point during school, we were in human cadaver lab. We were dissecting humans, right? And so I said, you know, these humans that we were dissecting had nervous systems, right? They had cardiovascular systems. They had respiratory systems. They had digestive systems. Like they had all the systems, right? They had, they had everything in there. So what was the difference and what is the difference between someone who's Who's dead? I'm just gonna say dead. We can say passed away. I'm I'm not gonna lie. Someone who's dead and someone who's alive. What's the what's the difference? What is the main difference? And so going back to the human cadaver, like you're working on this person. What's the difference between that person that's dead and you that are that are alive? This fascinates me every time I go to a funeral. Every time I, I especially if there's an open casket, I'll walk by and I'll look at this this person who is there like they have skin they have eyes they have a mouth they have a nose they have ears they have hands and they have they have legs and they have you know you you start to dissect them they've got all their all their systems in place so why are they dead because this is the foundation right this is the foundation the reason they're dead is because that energy if you will that that flow that consciousness that uh, power, um, that life force, if you will, whatever you want to call it, is gone. It's it's no longer in that body. Okay, as chiropractors, we talk about um, we talk about the the uh, it, it's referred to as the animation that that makes us alive, right? The animation, um, and so that's life force. It's it's God. It's it's spirit, if you will, whatever you want to call it. That is what has left us, and that means we are no longer alive, quote unquote, alive from a human standpoint. 
Now, I'm not going to get into the details of what happens to that spear, where that spear goes, what happens to it after. I'm not going to get into all that. I'm just saying when that spirit leaves us, when that spirit, when we're no longer connected, when our human flesh, our human body is no longer connected to spirit, that, that means we're done. We're done. I'm going to break this down for you a little bit more because I think it's 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 good to go into uh, a little bit more specifics about this. Because if we think about life from that standpoint, right, we're in flow with source, we're in flow with God, we're in, con we're in communication with God. God is in communication with, God, with us. God is animating us. Spirit is animating us, right? And let's say spirit, we're connected to spirit. We could be 100% connected to spirit, 100%. What kind of a life are we going to lead as compared to someone who's connected at 0%? Right. Between zero and 100 percent. Right. Zero percent. We're dead. 100 percent. We're we're totally alive. We're totally in tune and connected. Like this is Jesus Christ. Right. This is this is that level of connection. Right. With source is is Jesus Christ is 100 percent or close to as close to 100 percent as we're going to get. Now we can we can talk about other people. I'm going to refer to Jesus Christ at zero percent. We're dead. We're, we're no longer in human form anymore. We're no longer from a humanistic standpoint. We're no longer alive now. Next, next thing is, so we've, so we've gone from zero to 100%. Could there be somewhere in between? Could, could we fall somewhere in between zero and 100%? Yes or no? <laughs> Guys, listen, like, like this is, I, I'm getting, I'm getting truth bumps on me right now thinking about this, right? Because at zero, we're dead at 100%. We're, we're very close to being Jesus Christ, but most of us fall somewhere in between. And that is based on, that is based on our ability to communicate with source, to our ability to, to be in flow, to be in alignment with source. For my chiropractic friends, right? Alignment. When we talk about proper alignment, we're talking about not only of our spine, but more importantly, we're talking about in alignment with source, with God, with spirit, universal intelligence, with innate. Let's say we have someone that comes in that's at 50%, 50% connection with source. We start working on them. We start, and I'm just throwing out numbers, guys. I, I don't, I don't know if this can be measured. We, we, well, actually, to a certain extent, we can measure it with the, with the neuro infinity. For those of you who have the neuro infinity, um, I don't know if it's like full connection to source, but I'm going to break this down in a second to, to, to share with you why I think this. But <clears throat> someone comes in, they're 50 percent connected to source, 50 percent. Now we start working on them. We start working with them. We move them up to 60% or 70% connection to source. Are they going to be living a better life at that point? <clears throat> yes or no? Are they going to be living a healthier life at that point? Yes or no? Are they going to have better relationships? Yes or no? Are, are they going to be able to see the world at a higher vibration? Yes or no? Is that going to change their relationship with money? Is that going to change their relationship with others? Is that going to change their relationship with God? Is that going to change their their um, their health? Is that going to change their uh, whatever? Right? The, from from a humanistic standpoint, we're fifty percent connected to God. We move that up to seventy percent. Is our life going to improve? Yes or no? Again, guys, some of you guys might be thinking this is way too simplistic. Like this is this is this is too simplistic. But let's take that same person at 50%. They come in, we give them a care plan, and they say, no, sorry, I don't want to do this. Five years later, they move from 50% down to 40%, down to 30%, down to 20%. What's going to happen to their health? What's going to happen to their life? What's going to happen to their relationships? What's going to happen to their finances? What, gonna, what happens to them at that point? They're, they're moving farther and farther away from alignment with source, with God. But let me ask you this. Is God good? Is source good? Is innate intelligence? You you look out to the world. You think about this for one second, okay? And, and I don't care if you believe in God or not, right? If you believe, if you don't believe in God, that's fine. That, that's that's your choice. But, but, let's take this one step further. I want you to look at if you were to plant a seed in the soil at some point, and you were to water it and take care of it, would that seed turn into? some kind of a plant, whatever that seed is for an apple tree or for a, a, a rose bush, right? Whatever, whatever it is. If you take care of that seed, you plant it in the dirt. Like it's a seed, guys, it's a seed. You plant it in the dirt, you take care of it, you water it. Months later, whatever, whatever it is, weeks later, months later, years later, all of a sudden that turns into a plant. It's, now it's got rose bushes. Now it's got apples on this apple tree, whatever it is. That started with a seed. How did that happen? How did that happen, guys? Let me ask you this. How does the sun 
show up every single morning? How does the sun go down every single night? How do the oceans continue to send waves to the shore every, every, every minute of every day? How do we, guys, like I could keep going on and going. I, I think you get, you get the idea of where I'm going here, right? It, we, regardless if you call it God, you call it spirit, you call it source, you call it whatever you call it, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to just by looking around, how does, how does, how does a sperm and an egg come together in a woman, right? And, and nine months later, there's a human baby. Like, like that's proof in and of itself that there's some power, there's some intelligence that is out there, right? Some intelligence that is out there that is coordinating the functions of our universe that are coordinate the functions of, of, of nature that are coordinating. If it's coordinating our universe, coordinating the functions of, of, of nature, but you come back and you say, well, it's not coordinating my life though. That that's ridiculous. You guys really like, think about this. How can that, how can that energy, how can that life force direct the universe direct the sun that that revolves around like like that like how does this happen right how does this power uh, allow these trees to to grow to 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 animals to be able to do what they do i mean guys look at look at animals like look at birds look at have you have you have you ever seen a flock of birds that are that are that are flying and they get into these patterns and they know exactly what, what everyone is doing. They, like they, it's, it's amazing to me, right? It's amazing. Like I, I'm sitting here babbling. I can't even do it justice, but guys think about this, right? Think about uh, the power of, of this, this life force that happens that we see all around us that we'd say, Oh yeah, there's something out there. You know, that's, that's coordinating all this stuff. But when it comes to my life, nah, not happening, not happening. Because this is the difference, though, right? The difference is nature, animals. Um, you can look at uh, the the universe, the planets, the moon, the sun, the earth, whatever. Like these are all coordinated one hundred percent, one hundred percent by by source, by by this energy. The difference is we as humans have the ability to disconnect with source. Or connect with source. And that comes down to as practitioners, we're going to talk about that being our nervous system. Because here's the deal. And again, you can go back to the seven foundational principles that I did in, that I talked about in episode one, or listen to do a lot of the, a lot of the episodes. I, I refer to this stuff is if we're in survival mode, we're in survival mode, we're thinking, we're, we're having to think, right? Think about this. I just read a, an, an amazing book, um, Nagayan. It's um, Don't Believe Everything That You Think. I would highly recommend it. But he talks about how, and this was an aha moment for me. If you think about this, thinking, thinking is a verb. Thinking is a verb, right? And so this is something we have to do. This is our ego coming into play. Like we've got to think through a process. Thoughts, on the other hand, thoughts okay, are a noun. Because thoughts come to us. Thoughts come to us. We don't thought our way. We think, right? We don't thought, right? Thoughts come to us. Where do they come from? Where do these thoughts come from, guys? Think about it. Where do these thoughts come from? They come from source, right? They come from innate. They come from God. They come from spirit. Whatever you want to say, this is where these thoughts come from. This is my belief. You may believe it. You may not. But if nothing else, I want you to at least think about this. And I would love if you, if you have a different idea of where these thoughts come from, I'm, I'm all game. Like, give it to me. I haven't come up with anything, but reading this book is, was very powerful. But one of the things, again, thinking is a verb. Thinking is something we do as man, right? As ego, as, as we think through problems, because the reason we think guys is because we don't trust. We don't have faith in God, with spirit, with innate, with, with uh, source, right? Because those are the thoughts. We get the thoughts, right? Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like I, I had the most amazing idea right now, right? And then what happens is this, we go into this thinking process. Oh my gosh, that's not going to work because 
this is ego coming in, right? We're given this thought by, by this most amazing, powerful source, right? That runs the universe, that runs nature, that, that coordinates everything. And we get this thought from, from source and all of a sudden we poo-poo it with our human thinking, right? Our egos, oh, that's not going to work. That's stupid. Oh no, I'm not good enough to do that. Oh no, I'm I'm not. I don't know how to do it, so I'm just going to give up on that. I don't know how. I don't know. But guys, this is this is the difference. What I'm getting at here, you, you you're like, dude, you're going off on a tangent, but I'm I'm coming back because we're in survival mode. That's when we're thinking. Okay, we're in survival mode. That's when we're out of alignment with source. That's when our ego takes over. That's when we we figure out, okay, we got to do this and this and this because our brain is designed to keep us alive, right? Our brain is designed to help us survive. That's our, our brain's primary purpose. And so what happens is we go into this thinking mode. That's when we move into survival. Usually it has to do with fear and worry. And the reason for that is because our brain's primary purpose is to keep us alive. And so our brain is always thinking about how what we can do. What's what's on the next horizon? What's around the corner here? What do I got to worry about? Why why is this person staring at me that way? Why is uh, the lights off in this in this alley? And and like who's going to jump me? And this is where our brain goes. And this is survival mode. This is worry, fear, sadness, grief. Like this is this is the the survival mode aspect. This is when we're out of alignment, out of alignment with source. This is when disease happens. And it may not be in a short time. It may be usually it's in a long period of time, but I'm going to break this down because again, we're going back to why, why, why I use the term. If, you, if you're watching, let's save more lives. My t-shirt always says, let's save more lives. But when we're in survival mode, that's when we're out of alignment with source. Well, where does our health come from? Guys, I don't run my, my heartbeat. Like I don't every second of every day think about, okay, I got to Focus on beating my heart. I got to beat my heart. I got to beat my heart. I got to beat my heart. Oh, wait a second. I just ate some food early. Wait, I got to digest this food. I've got to take the, 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 the nutrients out of this food. I got to get it through my, my gut membrane and into my bloodstream. And, and let's leave the toxins in there. So that'll be flushed down. That'll, that'll be released as fecal. Guys, I'm not thinking about that stuff. That is source doing that stuff, right? But when we're in survival mode, Understand, and I think you guys are on the path here with me. When we're in survival mode, our brain is not focused on procreating. Our, 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 we're not focused on reproducing. When we're in survival mode, our gut is not functioning properly. Our immune system is not functioning properly. Our, 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 our uh, cardiovascular system is not functioning properly from a health standpoint. It's functioning from a standpoint where we can survive, where we can stay alive. Ideally, and depending on who you talk to, our Nervous system should only be in that state 10 to 15% of the, uh, the day, 10, 10 to 15% of the day. And if you want to break this down, this is when we're thinking, this is when we're thinking, right? We're thinking through problems because that's going to bring us back to a lot of times fear and worry. Okay. Now, on the other hand, we move into parasympathetic state. This is what I call thrival mode. I used to call it healing mode. I like to call it thrival mode now because uh, yes, for sure. It's healing mode as well. It's when our brain says, okay, everything's good. We can connect with source, which is where health comes from, which is where life comes from. Right. And then source can, we, we trust source to, to run our digestive system, to run our immune system, to run all these, all these things that allow us to be healthy. Right. But in addition, when we're in that alignment, now our relationships are going to improve. Our decisions are going to improve. Our, our finances are going to, uh, we're going to make better decisions around our finances, around our, our career, our, uh, our, our, you know, what we love to do our life. And so that moves us into th what I call thrival mode. Okay. Because our brains, again, our brains are not designed okay, to, to, to allow us to thrive. Our brains are designed to keep us alive, to survive, not to thrive. The only time that we thrive is when we connect with source. And you ask anyone who's uber successful, whether it's in a relationship, whether it's a career, whether it's money, they are going to tell you almost always, they okay, almost always, unless they're still in this it's all me ego type thing. And I had to, I had to do all this stuff more than likely. They're going to tell you that it wasn't me. Like it was me getting in alignment with source. And, and all of a sudden these things started to happen. Like people started coming in my life. Opportunities started, started to happen in my life. Like, like guys, this is, this is where it happens, right? You think about, I want you, I want you to think about this for a second. My wife and I have done this a couple of times. 
if you're married, I want you to think about all the things that had to happen in order for you to marry the person that you're married to. If you are, uh, well, if you're watching this, I'm guessing you're a healthcare practitioner, but you, you're probably a doctor in, in most cases. Think of all the things that had to happen in order for you to become a doctor. Guys, think about that. I'll, I'll share my story real quick. I wanted to become a, I was going to become a gym teacher. I went to school uh, to play football, right? And and that was my goal was I wanted to play football. I wanted to be in the NFL when I realized that wasn't going to happen. Okay, I'm going to be a gym teacher, just like all the rest of the football players at my school, right? We're going to be gym teachers. So I'm walking along and I still remember this to this day. My buddy says to me, he says, why are we going to become gym teachers? Why don't we become something more? Like, why don't we become doctors or something? This is what this guy said to me. Guys, this is when I was, I was 18 years old, 18 years old. And this guy says to me, and, and let's even take a step before that. Like I was being recruited to play football. I could have gone to a different school, but I ended up at the same school as my, my high school teammate, my, my buddy who says this to me as we're walking down the catwalk of, of the universe. I mean, of the, of the college, he says this to me. I said, yeah, exactly. Why don't we, why don't we do that? And so I, I changed my classes. Boom. Just like that. I changed my classes. I started taking my, my first chemistry test. I, I started taking chemistry. My first chemistry test, I got a 40% out of hundred, 40 out of hundred. Okay. He got a 25. He said, screw this. I'm dropping out. He dropped out. I stayed in. I said, no, I'm doing this. Like, I think about all those decisions that had to happen, right? And then I wasn't going to become a chiropractor. I, I was thinking about going to medical school. Meanwhile, I'm going to the gym. I mean, I mean, this guy, I see this guy there. I, I probably saw him every time I went to the gym for two years, never said a word to him, never said a word to him. All of a sudden one day, for whatever reason, guys, again, this is not, there's no way that this is just happenstance, right? This is just accident. I see this guy every day for two years. Every time I go to the gym, I see him there. He's working out with another guy, right? For some reason, we strike up a conversation. I say, hey, how's it going? Great day. Yeah, what's happening? Oh, he says, this is my last workout here. You won't be seeing me here anymore. I'm leaving tomorrow for chiropractic school. What? What, what are you doing? What, what, what's that all about? He, he, he's, he, he jumps into a conversation with me for about 10, 15 minutes. Tells me all about chiropractic school, why he wants to become a chiropractor. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I think I, I might want to do that, but I don't know that much about it. He says to me, give me your address. I'll drive to your house and bring you the information for the school that I'm going to tonight before I leave tomorrow to, to, to go 12 hours away to school. I'm like, yeah, right. Whatever. I give him my address guys. It's six, seven o'clock that night. Hear the doorbell ring. Boom. It's this guy, Jim Hoven, Dr. Jim Hoven. He shows up and we became, we end up, you know, becoming friends. We were in the same fraternity, et cetera, et cetera. But he shows up at my, my office. I mean, my house, I don't even know the guy. And he brings me this material. Guys, think about this. Think about all the things that had to happen to put you in the place where you're at now, whether it's, you know, it's a relationship, whether it's a career, whether it's a, 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 whatever, whatever, because it didn't happen by accident, right? There's, there's, there's a power there's a power greater than us, right? There's a life force that's happening, that's coordinating these things. And the great thing is when you're in alignment with source, you're going to make decisions based on these nudges, if you will, these, these insights, these whispers from source to move you in a specific direction. And that direction, guys, is where you're supposed to be. You, know, you can ask yourself, why was I there that night? Why was I here this time? You were right where you were supposed to be. Anyway, I'm getting back. I'm getting away from the topic. So let's go back to let's save more lives. Guys, if we have a patient that comes in that is stuck in survival mode or in the majority of their life is in survival mode, they're fear and they're worried, right? And, th and then they can't get out of their head, okay? They are moving down a path where if, if they're moving away from source, they're moving away from that 100% connection down to, you know, 50% down to... 40% down to 30%. Is that going to get better on its own? No, because people don't know how to coordinate their own nervous systems, right? This is the power of brain-based practice, right? Is we lead people down a path to teach them how to coordinate their own nervous system so they can move out of survival mode into thrival mode. When they move into thrival mode, what happens to their health? What happens to their relationships? Again, we just went through all that stuff. This is the power, right? This is the power of what we hold when we move into a brain-based practice. We 
actually save lives. A buddy of mine, I was telling the doctor last night, uh, a buddy of mine is a, a nurse. He's a, a critical care nurse, works in the um, in trauma at the hospital in, in the in the um, uh, um, burn uh, ward, right? People that have been burned, like, you know, 100% of their body or 70% of their body or whatever. And so these people are like literally on their deathbed, right? And so he says to me one day, he says, dude, stop posting this stuff that you save more lives. He said, you don't save lives. I save lives. And so I'm not talking about that like that. I'm not talking about a life like that, right? I'm talking, I'm talking about people who come in, okay, who are stuck in survival mode, who have, maybe they have high blood pressure. Maybe they have a digestive issue. Maybe they have sleep problems, but those are all signs that there's a brain problem, right? They're stuck in survival mode. These are all red flags. This is the way that we were built, that we were designed to say, hey, there's a problem here. But what we've been taught to do is cover that up, ignore it, take a medication, right? Oh, well, it'll get better on its own. Meanwhile, it gets worse. Well, this is a sign, guys, when we're moving away from source, we go with, let's say we move from 100% down to, let's say we start at 70%. We've got uh, a digestive disorder, we've got high blood pressure, and we have a sleep problem. We cover it up. We don't deal with it. We don't get to, we don't, we don't teach our nervous system to move from survival mode into thrival mode. And so what happens is two or three years later, instead of being at 70%, now we're at 65%. Now our sleep patterns are worse. Now our digestive system is working um, less and less properly. And now all of a sudden, now we're, we're starting to get colds more. So our immune system is not functioning properly. Two or three days, two or three years later, now that moves down to uh, from 70 to 65. Now it's down to, let's say, 50%. Now all of a sudden, we've got a cancer diagnosis. Now all of a sudden, we're starting to lose our memory. We've got dementia starting to happen, right? And guys, this is what I'm talking about is, is if we would have started when they were 70%, we could have, we could have at least kept them at 70% or move them up to 75, 80%, right? Closer to being in flow in alignment with source which means a better life, right? It means uh, better health, right? It means more than likely, probably, well, I shouldn't say probably, but more than likely a, a longer life as well, right? Because guys, <laughs> I keep going on and on, but uh, hopefully that gives you an idea. But, you know, that's why I wanted to break this down is when, when we when we come across a, a, a patient who is suffering uh, whether it's just a sleep problem or whether it's cancer, or whether it's dementia or whether it's Parkinson's disease or it's it's anxiety, doesn't matter. These are all signs that they are moving away from source. When they get to 0% of their connection with source, where does that leave them, guys? It leaves them dead. Meanwhile, you know what we have is we have a medical profession or I should say a pharmaceutical profession really that you know is covering these symptoms up and is is really creating more of a of a disconnect with with source as we move along. Yeah, it may help with some symptoms, okay, temporarily, or maybe even maybe even for long term. You know, we, we get a lot of patients come in that, that are on high blood pressure meds. Yeah, their high blood pressure meds is, are taking care of their high blood pressure for the rest of their life. Meanwhile, their brain continues to degenerate, continues to rot, and they move farther and farther away from source their connection with source. And so now what happens is their, their, their uh, high blood pressure now, you know, yeah, their, their blood pressure medication is taking care of that, but now they've also got digestive problems. And then years later, they've also got um, the, the early onset Parkinson's disease, or years later, they have a uh, beginning of uh, tumors starting to form in their body because their immune system is not functioning properly. See, the farther we get away from source, the more we encounter health problems, life problem. And so what we want to do is we want to look at that from that standpoint a lot of times, right? And that's going to, that's going to allow us to say, Hey, we're, we're saving this life because as one of the things, and this is a doc, I, I made a couple of notes here. Um, you know, not, not only regarding uh, quality of life, but also moving them away from more pharmaceuticals, right? More, the, the more we move them away from more pharmaceuticals, the more we can get them off those pharmaceuticals, the, the more likely they are going to be able to stay in connection or, or a greater connection with source, right? They move into that, which is going to improve their life, right? So when I say save more lives, guys, yeah, I'm talking about saving lives. It may be in the short term, for example, with the neural infinity, guys, we can see in the neural infinity and going back to what I was talking about earlier, you know, with the neural infinity, 
we can see when a person is functioning the way they're supposed to, when they're functioning, when they're, when they go into relaxation, into recovery mode, if, for those of you not familiar with the, the neuro infinity, it's technology that measures um, seven areas of physiologic function, starting with brain waves, and then also heart rate and respiration rate and skin conductance and hand temperature. So we know what should happen during stress to those things. And then after that stress is gone, which lasts about 90 seconds, we go into a 90 second recovery period. So during that recovery period, we know what should happen to heart rate and respiration rate and skin conductance and hand temperature, right? We, we know that. that that's that person recovering, letting go, connecting with source. And that's allowing source to be able to do what it needs to do. And that tells us they're moving into a thrival mode instead of a survival mode. Right now, obviously, we want a body that we can move into survival mode when we need to. But when when the, when the when the stress is gone, we should be able to move into thrival mode. And so that's ultimately what we want. And and the neuroinfinity, the the stress response evaluation tells us that. And what we find is that when people get better scores, it's called a brain score. When people get br better brain scores, what we find is their health improves. But we're looking at from a, a health standpoint, what we will find is we dig deeper with our patients is we will find that their relationships get better. And so and we, we hear this from a lot of patients. They'll come in and say, oh my gosh, like I, I don't have anger issues anymore. My marriage is so much better. I'm able to communicate better with my, my spouse, um, my relationship. I had one doc, uh, brought tears to my eyes. He said, uh, I'm no longer beating my kids. Like, like this is the power of moving out of that survival mode into a thrival mode. Right, it it affects not only health but also relationships and finances and career and and jobs and decisions and everything. So that's what I'm talking about when I say let's save more lives, guys. So understand that. Hopefully, you can get passionate about that when you hear that term. When you think about saving more lives, yeah, we're not talking about someone on their deathbed. Like if someone's on their deathbed and they need medical, let's let's get them some medical treatment, right? Let's get them at that point, let's get them on the drugs, on the on the whatever we need to do to keep them alive. Right. But at that point, then once they're alive, then we've got to start to move them into a, a thrival state instead of a survival state. And so we've got to start weaning them off that stuff. So I'm not saying medicine is bad. I, I've been bashing here the you know, medical model and the pharmaceutical model. Now, I'm not saying that that it's it's 100 percent all the time bad. Because in some cases we need that, but a lot of times we've gotten to that point because we 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 haven't been able to direct our nervous system to get to the point, our brain and nervous system, where we get to the point where we're more in thrival mode, where we're connected to source. Because if we could teach them that early on, we we will avoid being on our deathbed. We will avoid being in the hospital where we need medication or we need emergency surgery. Sure. Accidents, guys, I, I get it. Like all that is fine. I'm talking long, long-term chronic disease processes like cardiovascular disease and, 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 and immune system disorders, right. And, and dementia and, and Alzheimer's and, and the list goes on and on. That's, that's what I'm talking about. So I want you to have passion the passion when you're in practice, knowing what it is that you're doing from a brain-based standpoint that you're actually saving lives. And when you think about it from that standpoint, guys, that's going to be conveyed, right? That's going to be felt by your patients. That means more people are going to accept care. That means more referrals are going to come in. You got to go see my brain-based doctor, my, my brain-based chiropractor, my brain-based physical therapist, my brain-based acupuncturist, whatever, whatever that is for you. And when people say, well, no, I've seen an acupuncturist, I've seen a physical, I've seen a chiropractor, right? No, 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 no. You don't understand. Okay. What my doctor does is very different. What my doctor does is much more powerful than these other practitioners. Okay. Because they're focused on improving brain and nervous system function. They're focused on uh, improving your connection to source. Now, obviously they're not going to say that part, but they're going to say, you know, focused on the brain and nervous system. Um, and so that's the process that we go through. Uh, in doing that is is making sure that we connect the dots between, hey, your brain coordinates every function in your body, but when your brain is stuck in survival mode, it can't coordinate the functions of your body the proper way. So we've got to move it into thrival mode where we move into parasympathetic. That's when we're able to connect with source and that's when we're able to thrive. Hopefully that helps docs. If you enjoyed this, please again, share, please like, please comment, please send me some requests, what you'd like to hear. Again, I, I appreciate you. I'm, I'm so humbled and honored that you are listening to this. Uh, and uh, I just want you to know I love you, right? And again, I, sh I share this every time at the end is, is I love you at your best. I love you in your mess. 
because that's the way I want to, I want to be loved. And that's the way I love. And that's the way my God loves me. And that's the way God loves you as well. Your God, whatever that version is of you, uh, of God, that's, that's the way God loves you as well. So take care. Uh, we'll talk to you soon. I'm out. Peace out. Mm -hmm.